Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, no, I know. Right. Fuck, I'm anxious. <laughs> like, like I'm not totally freaking out, but you know, I'm a little bit anxious because I'm a, you know, I'm about to make a talk, and uh, like, what if, what if they fucking hate me? You know, what if they hate South Africans? <laughs> what if my ideas are shit? Yeah, like, like I don't know, man. Like, like you know, let's talk about this. Yeah, um, and and you know, obviously it's about creativity today, and there's a lot of work done around giving people tools and advices and tips and techniques to be creative. But for me, tools are as good as the people who use them. Like, this is about you. If you think you're useless and you're no good and you're not creative and haven't got a creative bone in your body, it doesn't matter how many tools I give you, you'll be shit, man. And I'm useless. You give me that hammer, I promise you, it's, it's, it's not a good thing, you know? So it's the attitude and the belief and the conviction that I want to talk about. And I call that brand you. That is brand you. I fucking brand everything, yeah? But the most important brand of all is brand you. And it's not like there's the real you, then there's the brand you. It's not like that, no. Because branding for me is, is authentic and it's based on who you really fucking are. And so the, the brand you is the real you. The other you is the bullshit you. The you that turns up wearing masks full of insecurities and full of anxiety, shall we say, yeah? So I'm talking to the brand you, okay? The real you. And my theory is that creativity sits inside everybody. Like there it is, literally sitting inside, in your heart, in your soul, in your breast, in your being, yeah? And the thing is that anxiety is a wall that fucking traps it. This is my theory, okay? This is what I'm putting out there, yeah? that's what I'm saying. So there you are with all your creativity inside, wonderful, ready to bloom, and then there's this wall of anxiety. And, and things don't come out quite the way you want them to or the way they should. And that's what I want to discuss. And as I discuss this, I want you to be mindful of another conversation that's happening all the time. And this is the more important conversation. There's me up here talking shit about stuff and that's fine. But there's a conversation you're having with yourself and it's called the voice in your head. Do you know the voice in your head? Well, if you don't know, it's the voice saying, what fucking voice is he talking about? <laughs> yeah? It's that voice, yeah? And what does that voice do? Yeah? Yes, no, right, wrong, yeah, agree, disagree, yeah, no, I'm not sure about that, yeah, no, that shit, yeah, that's okay. You just look for stuff that feeds and supports your worldview, your ideas and your opinions. So here's the deal. I want you to consider that everything I'm going to say to you this morning is complete and utter bullshit. Right? Nothing is true. I'm not pretending it's true. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm committed to what I'm saying, yeah? But just, I'm not pretending it's true or real or anything. And what I'm asking you to do is to try it on. So you see that jacket? It's a fucking shit jacket. Yeah? Yeah? But just try it on. Just see. Does it fit? Is it for me? So everything I say, it's not true. It's just bullshit. But just try it on. Go, yeah. Is this, does this maybe work for me? Like, is my creativity being trapped inside a fucking wall of anxiety? Is that really the case? Uh, I suppose it could be. That's all I'm asking you to do. If you do that, you'll get value out of this. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, that's the deal. So I always like to begin with the end in mind. This is a human journey. It's about you and your creativity. And I love, I love Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah? I love it. Fucking, you know, here we got our physiological and safety needs. And, you know, like if we were living in Syria, I don't know if they have these creative sessions mornings in Syria. They probably don't. No, they do. Do they? Really? Because people in Syria are really just trying to survive and be safe. And you know what I mean? We live in Australia. We're fucking lucky. Yeah? Love and belonging. This is a love and belonging event. Fucking esteem. Look at you all. Trendy fucking glasses and shirts and shoes. All young fucking hip people hanging out here in the fucking red fern area. And then there's the thing up top, which is creativity and self-actualization. I put creativity up there. It's like it's up there for me. It's like a high, high 
need. It's not even a want, it's a need, it's a thing. Yeah? So what is self-actualization? Like, what is that? Yeah? So, this isn't Maslow, but I reckon if he was alive today, he'd look like that. Okay? Like a fucking weird shrink. Self-actualization means to become everything that one is capable of becoming. Okay? So let me draw it thus. So here you are. Okay, that's you. And let's say that you becoming everything you are capable of becoming is the edge of this whiteboard. I mean, arguably there's no limit. But let's just say this is it, yeah? Here you are. Whoa, fuck, man. Okay? That's you, your full potential. Woo! Okay? Your creativity sits out there. Your fucking everything sits out there, okay? So, oh, jeez, man, this fucking mic is digging my head in. Where do I put this thing? What do I do? Yeah, okay. Like, I speak like this. This is how I speak. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's the deal. So, if that's the thought, the question is, where are you sitting today? Okay? How close are you to becoming everything that you are capable of becoming? Yeah? As a human being, and as a creative especially. So, let me ask you this question, okay? This is not a question, it's a statement. And I'm looking for a show of hands. Okay? The statement is... And that, by the way, is the great Salvador Dali. He was fucking crazy. His most famous quote was, I don't do drugs, I am drugs. <laughs> fucking love it. And he used to walk around with an anteater on a lead. For real. I am an incredibly creative human being. Okay? And I want you to score yourself between 1 and 10. If you're a 10, put your hand up. You're a fucking legend, man. In this room right here. If you're a 1, there's the door. Go home. <laughs> or you're somewhere in between. Yeah? Pick a number for yourself and I want a show of hands. Okay? Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Any tens? Yeah? <laughs> ah. This is leaning. Any nines? One nine. Any eights? Twenty. Sevens. Fuck. So what's that? Fifty. Sixes. About, yeah, about the same. Forty. Five. About ten. Four or less. Two, three, four. Okay, five people. Okay. Okay, what's the average? Just give me a round number. Just the average across the group. Round number. Give me the average. Seven. Yep, seven, yeah. Okay. Okay. You ready for this? Boom. <laughs> Fucking boom. It's always a seven. Yeah. You know why? Because there's a risk. There's two risks when I ask this question. The first risk is you put your hand up and you say you're a 10. What's the risk? What's the risk? You put your hand up in front of all these people and go, yeah, I'm a fucking 10. Being judged. Huh? Being judged. Being judged. You're a dickhead. <laughs> put your head in, buddy. Who's a 10? No one. Who do you think you are anyway? Yeah? You get that? The other risk is you put your hand up and you say I'm a two or three or... It's a big risk. What's the risk? <laughs> Fucking fail. You're a loser. Like, <laughs> really? Is that it? Is, that, is it like that's it? So, what do you do? You gravitate towards the comfort zone. The safety zone. To be a seven. A sea of sameness. Like those little people on the right there. Like, no one remembers who was a seven. I remember who was a nine. It's that guy there with the fucking top hat. <laughs> yeah? He put his balls on the line. You know? But here we go. When I come up and brand an organization or a company, I don't rock up and go, so we're going to brand you, but we're going to aim to be a 7 out of 10, man. It's like, no. Okay? 
this. This is the comfort zone. Yeah? This place here. Comfort zone. Creativity, by the way, happens out there. It does not fucking happen in the comfort zone. But given a choice, given a situation like this, with all the peer pressure and stuff and group dynamics that goes on, people opt to be a seven. There you sit. Captains of fucking mediocrity. Yeah, you pulled it. You pulled it. But you know what? You're not a seven. You're a ten. If you believe you're a ten, you'll fucking be a nine, maybe, and maybe even a ten. If you believe you're a seven, you'll probably be a five. Just fucking believe in it, man. Put it out there. Say, yeah, fuck, I'm a 10. Why not? Everybody is. So let me ask you this and build on this question, okay? Or build on this topic. What are the top attributes of a creative human being? Like the fucking things of a creative person. Any role, any industry, any place. The top, top attributes that make somebody an amazing creative, okay? I want you to shout them out and write them up. Okay. What do you got? Huh? Authenticity. Curiosity. Yep. Yep. Sense of self. Huh? Sense of self. Whatever the fuck that means. Willingness to fail. Huh? Willingness to fail. Willing to fail. One more. Imagination. Imagination. Okay, so there's your list. This is, a, this is peak kind of performance when it comes to your creativity. Sense of self, humor, courage, a lack of fear, authenticity, open mind, curious, willing to fail and imaginative. Okay? There it is. There's your list. All right? So, let me tell you something about this language, yeah? The one time you build your brand and you pitch yourself to the world is when you write a fucking CV. Is this the language that dominates and characterizes your CV? Like, what's on your CV? A whole lot of shit. <laughs> Dates, uh, technology, design, I can use this system, I can work on that fucking software, and I can do this, and I worked for three years here, and I did this there, and, and you're, you know, it's all that stuff, isn't it? Facts, figures, pedigree. Like, is your CV headed, courageous, fucking funny, willing to fail? guy or girl, just the sort of person you want to hire in your department? No, it's not. And here's the thing about CVs, yeah? And this is an important point, because this language is kind of lost. This is the language of brand you. This is what it's all about. And we feel uncomfortable with it. Let me explain. When you do your CV, there's always someone in the family or a friend who's a bit of an expert, yeah? Yeah? yeah. Uncle Frank. What do you think, Uncle Frank, of my CV? You know, like, just to, you know, give it a run by him because he's the guy, yeah? And he goes, yeah, no, it's, it's good, it's good. I think you want to personalize it a little bit. So stick in a section on hobbies and interests, yeah? <laughs> and write rugby and ballet in case you're being interviewed by a girl or a guy. Just play the game a bit. And then you took a two-year gap, yeah? And that, that's not a good look. I mean, two years of doing fuck all is not a good look. So... <laughs> So, yeah, but I worked in that pub in Wales, Uncle Frank, and I helped him design a flyer for a Mother's Day promotion. He goes, great. Let's put in there, marketing assistant for pub for six months in Wales. Yeah, we plug the gap. Now, instead, what you should put on your CV is, you know what I did in that second year? You know what I did? I traveled Turkey smoking hashish with nomads. Yeah, that's what I fucking did. You want a sense of self, humor, courage, lack of fear, authenticity, open-minded, curiosity, imagination, and someone who's willing to fail. That's me, buddy. And I learned it smoking hashish with nomads in Turkey. Because you know what? They don't teach the shit at Sydney University. Yeah, they don't teach it at TAFE, and they don't teach it at school either. They don't teach this to anybody. And that's why this language is not valid because it's not taught. There's no formal accreditation in this stuff, which makes the whole creativity industry and the whole notion of creativity and what drives it kind of ugh, a bit anxious and ethereal. Oh my God, yeah? 
So let me tell you a story about Benetton. So you know the Benetton brand in Italy? And Benetton, Luciano Benetton's a real guy. Yeah? And he started his business many, many years ago. And he's always been very controversial. He uses his brand to raise awareness around global issues. And I'll show you in a moment what he's doing, his current ad campaign. And in the mid 80s, it was HIV AIDS, which was a big deal. And he ran this poster all over Europe, fucking pissed off the Vatican, pissed off all the Anglicans and anybody. And it's a young guy dying of AIDS, but he chose this particular photograph because the guy looks like Jesus Christ. Fucking amazing. Good on him. But before he started his brand, he went for a job interview. This is a true story. He went for the job interview and he turned up fucking naked. <laughs> like he walked in with nothing on. Imagine that in your place of work. Imagine that. Somebody rocking up nude. Can you imagine it? You'd be fucking talking about it for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, wow, okay? So let's say we want to recruit some creative people to join our team here today. Here's our list of top attributes. This is what we're looking for. Somebody comes along, so you look at 100 CVs, you know, as you do. You pick the top 10. You want to meet them in the flesh. Look them in the eye. And somebody walks in with nothing on. <laughs> Sense of self, fuck yeah. Humor, fuck, you're a funny guy. Courage and lack of fear, you get a fucking gold star for that. Authentic, it does not get more authentic than turning up in your birthday suit. Open-minded, you bet. Curious, yeah. Willing to fail, absolutely, buddy. And that's one of the most imaginative things I've ever seen in my life. Congratulations, sir or madam. You have got the job. Doesn't work like that, though, does it? And I'm not saying you need to turn up naked. But what I'm saying is that brand you and who you are, especially when you're wearing a creativity hat, is about putting your fucking self on the line. It's being out there, man. It's not being a seven. A seven is not putting yourself on the line. You've got to be a ten. You can't say, I have courage, I lack fear, I'm willing to fail, I'm imaginative, but I'm a seven. It doesn't work. Like one of these things, and this is the language of brand you, like what's your brand? What's your thing? You know, it's the lack of fear maybe. Well then be that person. And you know what? If somebody wants to fire you because of that, fuck them. This is your life. This is your creativity. And if they can't see that, if they can't see beyond these things, and they're caught up in, you know, being a seven and all that stuff, you don't want to be there. So here's what Benetton's running around the world. Oh, I'm going to show you what Benetton's doing now. This is a guy who stands for something, okay? I want to show you what he's standing for in the world right now. If you think about the world and the news, like the news is the most depressing fucking show, like what's going on? And this is Benetton's position in the world today. You know why that ad would never be made in Australia? Shall I tell you why? They'll say, run it by fucking 10 focus groups, that's why. And some bitch will say, what, are you having Muslim, lesbian woman in that ad? You can't do that. That's disgusting. It's going to offend the whole fucking Muslim community of Australia. Yeah, get fucked. And it's that kind of thinking and it's that kind of attitude that makes creativity and brings it down to being bland and to being average and to being a seven. Because that is undiluted. It's beautiful. There is stuff in there that's slightly confronting and a bit jarring and a bit this and a bit that. So what? That's the point and you really get the message and you feel it. 
I think that's a great example of uncompromised creativity. There's no anxiety around that fucking web engine puts it out there. Are some people going to hate that ad? Absolutely. So what? If you turn up and you stand for yourself and you put yourself out there and say, here I am, I'm a 10, someone's going to hate you. Fact. Right now in this room, somebody out there fucking hates me. I don't give a shit. Because I'd rather be being myself and saying what I've got to say than me trying to be a people pleaser and swearing less and being nice and a bit more corporate and wearing a nice collar shirt to please everybody. Because I'm not here to do that. You get that? That's how it works. So, here we are. My comfort zone, which is seven here. The anxiety. Let's talk, we're going to come to that now. And the magic, the creativity happens out of there. This, by the way, is a painting by Jackson Pollock. So, here's the million dollar question. This is the big fucking question, yeah? What's holding me back? This thing here, what's fucking holding me back? And I said to you, it's to do with anxiety, okay? But there's a bit more to it than just that. So I want to take you on a bit of a journey. I want to show you a video, okay? This video, okay, what these guys do is just fucking insane, yeah? Watching them will make you anxious. And I'm not suggesting you do this, but there's a reason why I'm playing it. And halfway through the video, there's a young girl, and she's interviewed, and she says something that, oh, I was really surprised to find this, yeah? So let's pick it up off the video on her point. Is that cool? Here we go. Tu peux l'installer où tu veux. Et euh, tant que tu es avec deux trois copains, bah tu peux faire plein de choses. Je veux dire, tu peux t'amuser à être à deux dessus, à essayer de te battre pour euh, gagner et à rester dessus. Tu peux l'installer au-dessus de l'eau, commencer à faire des saltos, tomber dans l'eau, tu peux faire vraiment ce que tu veux quoi. Ouais, t'aurais été tout seul, donc là, du coup. Seul. À ouais. quoi bon Donc partager ce projet-là. Euh... Ouais. Je suis pas sûr que je vais tenir avec les points. C'est vrai. <rire> We were sitting just just before he's walking, and then he he tells me that he's so scared, and he kind of whispers to me like he's telling me that he's so scared, and I was so shocked. And I ask him, "Are you scared?" And he says, "Yes, of course." J'imagine que j'ai le parachute dans le dos, il n'y a aucun problème. Putain, il est tendu dans le spring. Really first all of us on the Eiger. <laughs> the breath is like up there. Yeah, it's, it's just like when you watch it, when you watch him you leave it. And it's, it's, a like of, it's a lot of things, so let's go, it's so good, it's so good. <laughs> Hold you forever. Hold you forever. Now, baby.
build up another of the bodies of our brothers forever. Uh, Good. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes you feel quite anxious, doesn't it? Just watching it, yeah? It's like, oh, fuck, man. You guys, guys are anxious? Yeah. What did the girls say in the middle? What was, what was the thing? What was the insight? Yeah. You think people that do that shit on scared? They're kind of wired differently and they... No, bullshit. They are shitting in their pants, man. Full of anxiety, apprehension and trepidation. Fully. And that's fine. But the point is, and we all have that, don't let that stop you. And they don't let it stop them. And that's why they're living on the fucking edge. So this thing here, try this on. This is the big jacket I want you to try on. Oh, is it that thing that's got you trapped in the comfort zone of life and creativity is fear. You're fucking afraid. You're afraid because the voice in your head, you know that voice in your head? It's filling you with shit. I'm no good. Oh, this is not me. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, they're going to hate me. Oh, they're going to hate. All these fears. Fear that you're going to look bad. Fear that you're going to be judged. Fear that, you know what I'm saying? This is the shit. And of course, it's fine to have those fears. And of course, you will be judged. But that's other people's problems, not yours. Yeah? This is the thing. Oh, where's my clicker now? I can't do this, it's my back pocket, okay? So, what are some of the fears we have? Well, the first fear is the fear of standing out and being different. It wasn't one ten in the room, yeah? That's what a seven looks like, by the way. There you are, fucking suited up, looking like everybody else. Good on you, guys. What are the other fears? Shout them out, please. What are some of the fears? Self-doubt. Fear of failure. Imposter syndrome, whoa, that's such a big one, especially in creativity. Like, I'm a fake. You know how many people in your industry feel that way? Like, I'm here, I'm earning all this fucking money, and really, should I be here? I mean, what do I actually do? I can't even explain to my parents what I do, <laughs> let alone my friends. And like, am I, am I really deserved to Yeah, It's a massive thing. Others? Ridicule. Ridicule, yeah. Okay, so you guys, hear some of them. Fucking stupid. Fear of being stupid, yeah? Failure, big one. Fear of failure. You see, it's in your head, yeah? This one here. I'm too busy, man. I'm just too busy. It's a great one. I love this thing. Sort of fear of not being busy. Fear of missing out. You know when you see people and they go, so, how's work going? Uh, are you busy? Yeah? That's the question, isn't it? Not, are you being creative? No, no one fucking asks that. Are you busy? And what's the answer? Every time. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man, I'm so busy. What are you busy doing? Oh, you know, just, you know, meetings and emails and lunch and shit, you know? Like, yeah, that's great, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, why do we have to be busy? I fucking hate being busy. Creativity happens in between thoughts anyway. It happens when you're in the movies and in the bath and having a shit, you know? Like, you don't want to be too busy because there's no room for creativity. There's no room for any of this either. You know that, yet when someone says to you, how are you going? You go, yeah, no, I'm really busy. Don't do that, man, okay? Don't be busy. How many fears will you entertain today? Da, 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 da. Yeah? This is the thing. We live with these little fears that keep us playing small and we settle. And it's like that voice in your head that I talked about earlier on. It is a radio station. It is like the Carl and Jackie O on every fucking minute of every day. It's always talking. It never stops. And there's two stations, I rock and I suck. <laughs> yeah, and what station is yours tuned into? Fuck, it's I suck. Yeah, because the voice in the head is not a champion for who we are. It doesn't say, yes, I'm a fucking great creative, I'm a 10, I can do this shit. And I might fall on my face, but hey, that's all part of the process, who cares, you know? It doesn't, you know, it's like, oh, am I good enough? I'm, oh yeah, I don't know, it's like, it's like it chips away. It chips away. That's anxiety. A voice in your head 
that chips away and niggles and pulls you down every minute of every day listening to I suck. Yeah? Welcome to the world where being yourself is not fucking good enough. The biggest anxiety of all. The biggest taboo of all against knowing who you really are. Who are you really? What do you really have to offer? And we wear masks and we hide the shit behind these fears and these insecurities. And the only time we come out, the only time we really pop out, you know, and be true to ourselves is when we've taken MDMA. Oh my God. Did you fucking know it and go, yeah, look at you, buddy, you're on fire. And that's fine. I'm not judging that, but try and be like that all the time. Like, what the hell, man? You know what I mean? These inhibitions, these anxieties can be. So here's the thing. This is the other jacket I want you to try on. And this is a very important point to get. The most important agreements you make in your life are the agreements you make with yourself. And you don't even know you fucking made them. Until now. Think about it. What are the agreements you've made about yourself and your life? I'm not fun, I'm not fast, I'm not good, I'm not creative, I'm not brave, I'm not smart, I'm a fucking phony, I'm a fraud. Haven't got enough time, I'm not talented, I'm not creative, I'm not successful, I'm not good looking, I'm not handsome, I'm not macho enough, I'm not fucking pretty enough, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not interesting enough. Like, like you know, all those agreements that you make, they're not true. Like, there's no book that says this is it. You made that shit up. And you made some of it up when you were a kid. You know, maybe there was a teacher that gave you a bad day when you flunked a test and said, God, you're the most stupid kid I've ever taught. So you decided then, yep, I'm, I'm stupid. And you still live with that today, you know. And so the fact that that's an agreement you've got with yourself, I'm stupid, is a massive inhibitor. There's a price. When you're sitting at the table and you've got a fucking great idea, do you offer it to the room? No. Oh, no. No, I'm stupid. People are going to judge me. So you keep quiet and you say nothing. And then you share it with your mates at the pub afterwards. And you feel like a fail. Why didn't I fucking say it in the meeting room? And that's why. That's why. And it happens every fucking day, all the time. And eventually that becomes who you are. And I'm here today in 30 minutes to try and get you to fucking shift that. And you, you know what? That's true. So try the jacket on. If it fits, and you go, yep, there's some truth in that. Take that away with you, okay? So there it is. My comfort zone, the anxiety, and my agreements. Yeah? So it's really the agreements. Fear, anxiety, and the agreements that you make with yourself that come out of that. And it all happens up here in your head. Okay? So now it's time to finish off. And normally we can spend days doing this shit. It's time now to make some new agreements. And that's my invitation for you, okay? When you leave this room today, decide on what agreement you've made with yourself, yeah? What that is and what the impact of that is on your life and your work and you as a creative person. And make a fucking new agreement, okay? Here's the first agreement you want to make. This is the overall universal agreement. Is that glass half full or half empty? Because there's not a second slide with a half empty or a half full glass. There's only one slide. That's life. Creativity can be a hard process and a very fucking rewarding one. Don't let the hard get you down. That's life. Is it half empty or half full? If you're a half empty creative, beating yourself up, and this is not just about creativity, it's about life. I don't want to fucking have lunch with you, you know? Half empty people are really boring. Oh, life's so hard and the fucking... Yeah, yeah it is, I know that. Fucking welcome to the world, you know? But that's how you grow, that's how you develop, that's how you get fiber, that's how you get your ideas. But glass half full is a fundamental agreement. I see the world as glass half full. I live in Australia, I'm really fucking lucky. There's a lot of people out there on this planet who've got nothing like I've got. I have zero to complain about. I'm fucking awesome and life is great, yeah? So that's a nice agreement to make, yeah? And I suggest you do that. Now I'm going to play you one video and then I'm going to ask, invite you to make two more agreements about two other areas of your life, okay? Here's the video, and this is about death. I fucking love this. We're all going to die, okay? The thing is that there are some people living in Sydney today, hopefully not in this room, who will be dead tomorrow and don't know it. Like, like you know that. That's how it happens. That's life, guys. 
Like, you're going to die for a start, and it fucking might be tomorrow. So the whole notion of one day, someday, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next year, bullshit. There's no time. There is no time. This is the time. Now. So I want to play this to you, and it's about what happens when you do die, and you haven't lived your potential. Imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed. And standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. You never used those talents. And there they are staring at you as you're lying on your bed with large, angry eyes saying, we came to you. Only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what talents, what abilities, what gifts, what ideas would die with you? That's part of the show, by the way. <laughs> it's a fucking anxiety thing, yeah? Does that make you anxious? It makes me fucking anxious. It's like, what the fuck? We'll get through this. Oh my God, fuck, what's going to happen, yeah? Let's go quickly. <laughs> you know this quote? Dr. Seuss, today you are you, it's truer than true. There's no one alive as you are than you. Fucking the great truth, the universal, this, this is it. Do you think he wrote this for five-year-olds? Do you really think a five-year-old kid needs to be told this? They fucking don't, do they? It's us. You go up, you go to school, you go to uni, you go through the system. That's where you lose all the shit. You lose that sense of you. Yeah? Kids have it all the time. And if you don't know, if you've forgotten, go watch them playing in a fucking kindergarten at lunchtime. Be careful, though. <laughs> but watch them. They're fucking, it's, they're, they are random human beings, man. Like, that was you at one point. Spontaneous, crazy, mischievous, fun. You know, none of this shit up here. Oh, will I be judged if I do that? Will I look good? Will I? None of that shit going on. It's just like, Wah! I'm fucking alive, you know? That's the source, yeah? So, uh, what does it say? What do you reckon what it says? <laughs> so there's, there's, there's two questions here. The first thing I want you to think about to make a new agreement is, what is my greatness? Like, what am I fucking great at? Like, what am I a 10 at right now in this room? We don't have to send you on some course you don't need another fucking degree, or you don't need an MBA, that's for sure. Like, what are you great at? And if you don't know, because you might not be sure, you might say something like, oh yeah, I'm really humble and modest. Oh, fucking boring, man. And some people are, and that's okay. Ask your friends, ask your partner, ask your family, say, hey, what, tell me, tell me. And own that shit. And go, you know what, that's who I am. And people will say things to you that you haven't even thought about and go, really? And they go, yeah, fuck, man, you're that guy. You're that girl. Like, can you, yeah, you go, oh, shit. Take that on. That's the one thing you want to take out of this, yeah? What is my greatness? And make that agreement. And here's the other one. Coming back to brand you. What do I stand for? When you walk into the room for the job interview, like you're not naked, I'm assuming. So what the fuck do you stand for? A seven? Do you rock up and just try and fit and belong? And kind of like, yeah, well, I'll just play the game. What do you stand for as a creative person, especially? Like, it's like you're holding a sign. That's my sign. But you know that. I don't have to tell you that. Like, I'm that guy. I'm just like, yeah, fucking yeah, let's do it, man. Epic shit. And if people don't want to do epic, then, then fine. I'll go away. I'll watch the cricket. You know, I'll just stay at home. You know, like, this, this is what I'm interested in. You know, this, this is it. So what do you stand for? And people know. It's in your energy. It's in your eyes. It's in your language. It's in your vibe. You know, like it's there. So you can make that as an agreement as well. I stand for this. So basically the whole deal here is you write down what you want and you fucking go after it. My greatness is this. I stand for this. Success for me is this. And I want to be this. Fucking write it down. Not just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Write it down, man. Think about it, write it down, get clear on it, and fucking chase it down relentlessly. Yeah? And you might have to make some hard decisions and you might piss some people off along the way. Tough shit. You're not here to please everybody else and... Let me tell you this, popularity is for mediocre people. 
And by the way, if you're thinking about doing it one day, fucking don't. You see this here? This is a map of the time left in my life. I'm going to live till 80. That's the average white Australian smoker. Fuck yeah. I'm 57. That's gone. There's my sleep. Fucking love my sleep. There's my other shit, traveling maintenance. That's what I got left in the white space. That's it. That, that includes Monday, by the way. <laughs> and Tuesday. And Wednesday. Same for you guys. So you're younger than me. You're going, oh, I sucked him. He's so young. Look at this old fucking guy. Doesn't matter. Do this for yourself. You'll be surprised how small that white space is. Sleep's a third of your life, gone for a start. Plus the years you've lived. Plus all the other shit you spend in traffic and everything else. Take it. You could, the actual time you've got to make an impact, to make a difference, to live a life out of the comfort zone and do epic shit is really small. There is no time. Get onto it, start doing it right away. Thank you. What is the epic shit I'm currently doing? Uh, well, I've just, uh, I, I do two things. I do talks, and which leads to full day workshops, mostly around you know, a brand new and different things. So th this is part of that, yeah. I've been doing it for 10 years, and it's hard to, to get a career in speaking and workshopping and stuff. It takes a while, there's a lot of people out there, but I've been doing it for a long time, and it's, I seem to have a different style. A lot of bureaus won't represent me because I swear. So fuck them. Um, that's fine. I do it my own way. Um, it's quite interesting because swearing is becoming quite a big thing in the States now amongst the motivational kind of talkers, speakers there. It's becoming acceptable. I've spoken in America before and was totally forbidden to swear. So I didn't, obviously. But that's really changing. So I do that. And I'm, you know, the epic shit is if I come here today and somebody leaves this room with a skip in their step, a sense of possibility and... I've done my job. That's my fucking day's work. I'm going to go home and on the beach, literally. And then I do branding. And the clients we've got are uh, breast cancer trials, which we repositioned, renamed, rebranded, launched last year from being a different organization. We're doing a, a disability services provider called Lifestyle Solutions. Um, we do work for the CSIRO and Data61, which is their data R&D spin-off. So all our clients are actually not-for-profits. I mean, they run as businesses, but they're not there to make money. So it's quite interesting how we've attracted clients that are all driven by the cause and the purpose. And uh, yeah, I, I, I fucking love it, you know. Um, we worked on a client last year that was just a dickhead and said a whole lot of stuff but didn't actually walk their talk. Bye-bye. We flicked them. Fired them. We fight clients who like that. It's fucking great. <laughs> That's it. Yo. Have I always been the glass half full? No, I haven't. Ah, <laughs> uh, fucking hell! <laughs> when I grew up in South Africa, who's from Cape Town here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you wouldn't know you're too young, but it was 70s, my, my teenage years, and then I did national service. It was a very heavy drinking culture. It was a place of great suppression. I was very depressed. I uh, was diagnosed with depression when I was 30, stopped drinking alcohol, that was a massive part of uh, helping me, but life was fucking dark. Then I turned 40, and when I turned 40, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to live till 80, because of my thing. I'm 40, I'm halfway through my life. I'm going to live the second half of my life in an extraordinary way. I'm going to stop doing things to please other people, and I'm going to stop doing shit that makes my parents happy, my now ex-wife happy, bullshit, I'm just going to do my own fucking thing. And I did. And I changed my attitude, working on that, everything. So a lot of what I do in my workshops and stuff is based on my own experience, but as I've discovered, my road and my journey is everyone's road and journey, actually. I thought it was just me, but it's not. And that's what I do. And that's why I made all, up all this shit based on that, you know. And I just say to people, I'm not saying it's true, but try it on, give it a go. Uh, and that's it. So I'm, yeah, yeah. Yo. Once you figure out who you are and your greatness, how do you translate that into stories and communication with people? How do you, once you discover your greatness and who you are, how do you translate it into stories? I think the most important thing is to translate it into behavior, actions, yeah? So the way I do that, I think that if you have, let's say a, 
an idea of who you are, what makes you great, and you go, well, fuck, I'm living my life here, and I really want to be there, and it feels like a really big leap. Okay, that's too high, so I'll just, you know. How do you meet an elephant? One bite at a time. So what you do is you break it down into little steps. What am I going to start doing today? Little things. Just little things that I wouldn't normally do. Perhaps that are a little bit unreasonable. So there's not reasons stopping me from doing it. I'm just going to start putting myself out there a little bit, little bit, little bit. Okay? So for example, one of my actions is, or was years ago, was the smiley face. There it is up there. Okay? Because my whole purpose is to be happy and help others be happy. Fucking original, isn't it? So I got the smiley face. So my signature is Richard with the smiley face. Yeah? So people who get my emails will know that. So when I got my first home loan, which I don't have one anymore, which is fucking great, I signed it and the bank said, no, that's, that's not a legit signature. You know, like with a smiley face, I was like, that's my fucking signature. <laughs> Fuck off. And then with my kids, I'd sign the homework book. And when they were in prep school, it was like, oh, that's, uh, that's so cute and nice. But when they come teenagers, they were like, oh, you know, Dad, can you not do that fucking corny, you know, signing thing with a smiley face? I'm like, fuck off, man. That's my signature. <laughs> But then when you go to parent-teacher night, the teachers are like, oh, you're the dad, oh, we love that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if I go into company rooms or boardrooms, I leave smiley faces everywhere. That's what I do. It's one of my little actions. It's a little thing, but it's one of the things I do, you know? I, I will graffiti it as well. So I'll happily break the law to put my smiley face up. Fucking anything. I'd rather see a smiley face on the wall than a fucking Coke sign on the cross, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, where do you get inspiration when you work for yourself? Well, it's lonely, isn't it? Like, who do you work with? You've got to hang, you've got to hang around people that inspire you. Like, I work for myself, I, but never from home. You've got to work in an office and environment. Like, I work in a place in Shari Hills now. It's a shared community space. There's lots of that. You just need a desk, you know. There's a guy called Carl. I was telling the illustrator earlier on. He's a cartoonist as well, an illustrator. He's quite an old guy now. Was a designer in London and... He's fucking funny. And wherever I go, Cole goes. He never pays rent, but he just works out of my space because he fucking makes my day great. He inspires me, he makes me laugh, and Cole's a part of my life. You know, and if I just had Nick, who's my business partner, who's a very dry pom, I'd fucking die. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the freelancers he hires are even drier than him. It's just like, it's just like a fucking desert in there, you know? So thank God for Cole, you know? It's that. It's people, man. You need people. People interact with people, meet them, have them around, have groupies, get them in, do it like that. It's really important. And people that inspire you and excite you, you know? Because like I, I, I like have this metaphor, like how does the man who drives a snowplow get to the snowplow? Which is a VW ad from DDB in the mid-60s. So like I'm the snowplow driver, here I am driving, a, how do, you know, who fucking jigs me up? You know, who, who fucking excites me and makes me think differently and challenges me and my shit? You know what I mean? Cole does that. And there's another guy as well who really does it, but I need to bring him back into my world. I've been sort of reaching out to him recently, actually. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's the key. The, oh, two more. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. 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 Oh, the impact of space um, 10, 20 years from now. Uh, yeah, I think it's about, it's actually time. All you've got is time. Like I showed you the time map, that's it. All you fucking got is time. So what happens is we get busy and our time gets whittled away just doing all this shit on technology, yeah, which is a major problem. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Here's the question, do you control your phone or is your phone controlling you? And most people are controlled by their technology. But here's the other thing about time. This is my advice to you. You need to put very firm boundaries around your space and around your time. You need to be aware that it's an issue and you put boundaries around it. So the boundary that I put is as follows. You will never send or get a diary meeting with me through fucking Google or Mac calendar, you know, calendar diaries. Fuck off. Nobody is putting a time in my diary from their computer because that's an hour of my life. 
if you want me to be at a meeting and you want my time, you phone me or you come and see me, you tell me why I'm there and what it's about, and I will write it in my Collins 2018 paperback fucking paper diary. Yeah? That's how I manage and control my time. Yeah? And I've got a week thing, I can see it by the week. And that is critical. I don't let technology control that for me because if I do, other people start to control it and it gets out of hand. And you see people in the corporates, you know, the, the, like senior clients and stuff, look at their online diaries. They literally might have half an hour free in a week. I, I'm not kidding. Like every fucking slot is filled. And if the meeting's at 11.30, there's a slot from 11.15 to 11.30 to get to the meeting for a fucking taxi. You know what I'm saying? Man, that is crazy. Okay, you know what I'm, yeah? So I reckon that's the key. You've got to control your space and your time and take lots of leave. I think what you need to have in Australia, I don't know, I think some companies do it, is take, you, you can buy more leave from work. Buy another week. Take it off your salary, it's fucking worth it. It's so worth it, man. Buy another week or 10 days. My son works in London and that's what he does. In London they allow you bees, but he gets 34 days leave a year. He just buys more. He does shit all the time and he's, you know, recharging all the time and refreshing and his time, it's his thing, you know. That's really important as well. That's the other thing to do. You've got to take control of it though. People complain and go, oh yeah, they're making me work so late and they make me do this and they make me answer my phone at home. And no, no, they don't do any of that. You fucking allow that to happen. Set your boundaries. Be clear on what it is you want and that's it. Boom. If the company doesn't like it, fucking tough shit. Okay, last one, yeah. Do you think that gender dynamics has any impact on how we kind of become the best that we can be? And do you have any kind of thoughts about Ooh. how women tackle that differently from men? Do gender dynamics. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I get really nervous about this gender thing, you know, like, fuck, man. I got a daughter, Sophie, who someone here knows, and she's like fully into that. And I always put my foot in it to say the wrong thing. And I get into such fucking trouble from her. But I sort of don't, actually. I have this, my, it's a universe, it's male or woman, it doesn't make a difference to me, is my view. I mean, there are, <coughs> I think the kind of anxieties that women have, like I know one of the biggest, quite a surface anxiety, but one of the biggest anxieties that women have, and it's beautifully dramatized through the very famous Dove campaign, is that I'm not beautiful. And most women believe that. You know, like 95% of the women believe that. And if you go around with a view thinking you're not beautiful, the impact of that on your work, your life, everything is massive. So Dove got a beautiful spot that impacts on that. For guys, it's different, you know. For guys, it's all about being fucking macho, you know. And, and, and you know, cowboys don't cry. And, you know, this is what it's all about. So the whole notion of masculinity is different, obviously. But it's those stereotypes, you know. So they impact in the same way. They, the impact is the same, but just in different ways. That's the only thing. And I find that with my work that I do, is that the most responsive audience to my work, uh, are females are more responsive to my messages and my work than guys are. I know that. I know it through who follows me, who tracks me. I know that. That's because guys have got more, uh, you know, eh, what's this fucking shit, man? You know what I mean? So for me, the real challenge is to kind of get through to guys. You know, just be... Be normal, be real, talk like blokey, and like just swear a bit and go, hey, come on. You know, it's kind of self help, but I'm not yet with a fucking Anthony Robbins thing. I'm just trying to make it accessible, especially to men. So I think men have a, you know, historically more of an issue kind of opening up and seeing stuff like that. That's the only thing. But at the heart of it and the core of it, it's the same, I believe. Okay. Bye, y'all. <laughs>